Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and a um, couple of reminders, careers, uh, fall semester, I mean it's early August, fall semester is coming and um, this is the time to get enrolled in our programs. We do have a program that's an alternative to dietetics if you were thinking you'd like to be a nutritionist but you don't want to pursue that particular line of study. Uh, we have other programs as well, so uh, if you're thinking that you're a health professional who needs a change, we can help you do that. And if you're not a health professional, but you've always wanted to be one, uh, send me an email. We'll set up a time to talk. All right, I have a lot of news to share with you today, all right? So the first thing is the mayor of Moscow has um, eliminated mask requirements in Moscow. Uh, mayor Sergei Sobayanin played a major role in locking down all of Russia. He was a major player, sort of like um, some of the mayors in uh, cities in the United States. Um, he suddenly changed course and he says, Moscow has achieved herd immunity. There's no cause for alarm or lockdown at this time. He even says that the panic is over and he made an interesting comment. He says he doesn't think that Russians are gonna fall for this again. Everything is now open and pretty much back to normal. It's interesting because there's still 150 deaths per day attributed to COVID-19. You never really know because the data are so skewed all the time, but it's not much different than April. So it's again, fact-free, uh, this one is in hysteria, fact-free reporting, right? You know, we, 150 people were dying, locked down. 150 people still dying, it's all over with. Just go back to normal, forget about it, right? Um, masks are no longer uh, required in Moscow, but according to news sources, most people weren't wearing them anyway. They were over it, okay? And so some news sources actually said that what the mayor was doing was essentially caving to what people had already decided to do anyway. So I guess apparently in Russia, there's a lot more civil disobedience than there is here. Uh, and this kind of thing can make the guy look like he's in charge. Um, I think we should all be doing the civil disobedience, I'm just saying. All right, so when asked about the second wave that are psychic politicians all over the world, isn't it amazing how psychic they are? It's so incredible. He says, uh, people have gotten used to the threat. They constantly expect bad news. It really doesn't impact them so much anymore. Uh, July 13th, educational institutions, amusement, and recreation parks, and cultural centers reopened, and theater cinemas and concert halls with under 3,000 seats were able to open with limited capacity. So apparently Russia is a much more free country than the United States. Isn't that an interesting term, uh, uh, turn of events? Here in the United States, the Miami police have set up a mask trap to catch, uh, various mask traps to catch not only people who aren't wearing masks, but if you're not wearing it right, you can get a hundred dollar fine. Okay. Um, so this is a nice, another nice way I mentioned on Monday, the emperor of Ohio is raising money through um, fake hospital admissions for COVID because he can refill the coffers that he's bankrupted that way. So on July 17th, a woman by the name of Joanna Gianni said she'd just finished shopping at Publix in North Miami Beach, was walking back to her car, and she took off her mask that she'd worn inside the store. Almost immediately, a police officer came up to her and told her she was getting a ticket for not wearing a mask in public. Despite showing the officer that she had the mask in her hand, she got the citation. And then Dean Gonzalez says he was wearing his face mask when he stopped at a North Miami Beach supermarket, but he got a $110 citation anyway. He was talking to police officers. The face mask he was wearing moved down a little bit. His nose wasn't covered. And that was, uh, he was actually threatened with arrest. The officer said, you have to wear it properly. If you're not wearing properly, it's like you're not wearing it at all. Gonzalez was of course furious. Um, the Herald also found that the newspaper found that Ro Ronald Satute, who told the, told the paper he was in a barber shop on July 17th in North Miami, and he pulled the face mask down for a second to take a drink of water. And just at that moment, in walked a police officer and told him he was wearing his mask incorrectly and gave him a hundred dollar fine. So you're supposed to take the mask down to drink, except that if you take the mask down to drink, you get a fine and apparently you could even get arrested for it. So apparently you're not supposed to drink water. Um, he tried to explain that he understood the mask laws, but the officer said he didn't care. So isn't it good to know that we now have engaged the police and wandering around major cities looking for people who aren't wearing the mask right, or who are wearing the mask or taking the mask down to drink water, because we all know that you should suspend water drinking anytime you leave the house because water, who needs that, right? Now this is actually funny, this next thing I'm going to report to you. 
the governors of California and New York keep setting these new rules for restaurants and, and, and businesses in general. I can't remember if I reported this last week or not, but every time I think about it, I laugh. So the emperor of California has decided that many businesses either have to close or move outside. And he published a list of businesses that can be moved outside, one of which is a bowling alley. Okay, so I'm trying to think of how you move a bowling alley <laughs> outside or how you bowl outside. I mean, exactly how would that all work? But in any case, the targeting restaurants and, um, and so restaurants have been able to operate in both uh, of those empires, but with some restrictions, outside diners only. And they can sell alcohol, but only if they serve food. So now they're just trying, and it has to be a meal. It can't just be food, it has to be a meal. So of course then, the government has to start regulating what is a meal because not everything is a meal. So California says chicken wings, cheese sticks, fried calamari, and french fries are not considered meals, okay? Um, Governor Newsom um, has, here are the guidelines that he established. So, so he says it's easier, it's easier to say what's not a meal than it is to say what is a meal. So snacks such as pretzels, nuts, popcorn, pickles, and chips, not a meal. Foods ordinarily served as appetizers or first courses like cheese sticks, fried calamari, chicken wings, pizza bites, as opposed to the pizza, okay? Bites of pizza, no. Whole pizza, yes, you can have that. Egg rolls, pot stickers, cups of soup, and any small portion of a dish that might be part of a main course, but if it's not a full portion. Now, what I'm curious about is how we're gonna determine a full portion because, you know, some people like to eat bigger amounts of food than others. So I would, I'm sure that my meals would pass if I was under the, uh, uh, living under those two emperors. But, but um, thinking about like a half portion of quinoa and vegetables for somebody that doesn't eat as much as me, I mean, that person's likely to just get fined and the restaurant closed and all that sort of thing. Side dishes such as bread, rolls, french fries, onion rings, small salads. Okay, so a big salad is okay, but not a small salad. Now, I looked and looked, I could not find any plate measurements and I don't understand. I mean, I think you've gotta be specific about this. Why, I mean, what if, what if you had a big plate, but it was only half full of salad? Is it the plate size or, you know, maybe there needs to be a certain weight of the salad? Okay, so you can prove it. Now, I have another question. If you've eaten half of the salad, how could you prove how much salad was on the plate if the police come when you're halfway done? There are so many unanswered questions and so much more regulation that is needed here. Um, reheated, refrigerated, or, refer or frozen entrees and desserts. Now, I'm wondering if you get dessert after the meal and the only thing is dessert because you already ate the meal, I'm wondering what happens then. I mean, I suppose you could just get the restaurant closed and get arrested and taken off because you're eating chocolate pudding and it's the only thing there because eating chocolate pudding with meatloaf really sounds terrible. So um, anyway, um, you know, this is, uh, these are the new rules now. We, we actually need the emperors to tell us what constitutes a meal. Um, now, the, uh, the Centers for Disease Control in British Columbia um, has, uh, has some rules about sex that I thought were really interesting. If you're feeling fine and have no symptoms of COVID-19, you can still have sex. If you're feeling sick, so you should skip it. And I'm not gonna share all the details because the last time I did, they took the video down, but, but you really need to go there and take a look, I'm telling you. So go to the British Columbia Center for Disease Control at COVID and Sex. Just enter that in your search engine. You have to go take a look at this. You will not believe it. I'm not gonna tell you the rest. That's your homework assignment before tomorrow. Go take a look at this. And then I have a funny story for you. My husband went to a Valvoline near where we live in Massachusetts to have the oil changed in our daughter's car. It's a drive through one where you wait in the car while they change the oil. He drove in and they asked him to wear a mask and he said he didn't have one, but would roll up the windows. They said, no, they couldn't change the oil if he wasn't wearing a mask. So the windows rolled up. You know what the problem is? That COVID is tricky stuff. I mean, it, it just, it leaks through the tiny little cracks in the windows. I mean, I don't actually feel safe in the office because you can't see, but there's windows over there and there's a door over there. So the COVID could sneak underneath the door because there is like, you know, it's not like real tight to the floor and then come in through the windows. I mean, it's a very unsafe environment. So I should be wearing a mask, but then you wouldn't be able to understand what I say. I've had to tell people this week to take down the mask because I can't understand a word they say on the phone. All right, so I thought that was 
pretty incredible. Now we're going to get to some serious stuff. So this is serious. This is what's coming. So this went out uh, from the Ohio High School High School Athletic Association. In order, a child is being asked to sign this along with the parent, okay? And if I were a parent, I'd pull my kid out of athletics before they would sign this. I agree to testing for COVID-19 and potential subsequent self-quarantining if I'm identified as a contact of anyone who is determined to be positive. So high school kids are being told, if you know anybody who tests positive, you agree to go home and quarantine. If I test positive, I agree to self-quarantine in a location to be determined in consultation with my family, a medical practitioner, and or local health department until my symptoms have resolved. Parents, do you want your kids, where your kid's gonna live, to be determined by the local health department? What is this? I agree to timely report any known or potential exposures to COVID-19 to the school administration and athletic training medical staff, and then monitor them for the following symptoms. I won't read it to you. If I develop the symptoms, I agree to contact my athletic trainer or another medical practitioner and follow the medical staff's instructions which may be, include being tested for COVID-19 and self-quarantining while the test results are pending um, and being evaluated by the athletic training staff. The athletic training staff does not hold a medical degree. Do not allow your child to be evaluated by the training staff. So in general, the CDC recommends getting a flu vaccination. Participate fully and honestly with the administrative and or athletic training staff for contact tracing to determine whom I might have potentially exposed to COVID-19. Agree to wear a mask, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it, it's this is appalling. No high school student should sign this and pull your kids out of athletics. It is not, you know, this idea that a year away from athletics is going to be the end of the world. If that's standing between your kid and the end of the world, you've got bigger problems than any of us can help you solve. Um, last but not least, I saved this for last. Um, this is uh, published on June 11th, 2020, not that long ago. And it is, I don't know if you can see this here, COVID-19 Local Community Isolation Site Operation Manual. And it's for the state of Wisconsin. So I'm gonna read you, the whole thing is 100 and some pages long. I just have a little bit of it here because there are some really choice things you need to know. When a healthcare provider or public health official, nurse, contact tracer, or other, contact tracer, identifies an individual with a need for isolation who cannot isolate in their own home, they may be referred to their local isolation site. At this time, the individual will have six hours to check in at the isolation site. Six hours. A contact tracer can have, give you six hours to check in in the state of Wisconsin. So let's go on here. When you get there, um, before arrival, the person should arrange to collect items they will need for the duration of their stay, and they have a recommended packing list that you can download from their manual. Once the individual has arrived at the site, they should don a surgical or cloth mask available at the front door. There should only be one individual in the lobby at a time. If there is someone else present, the individual should wait outside until the other intake is complete and the occupant has left the lobby. And then the person has to sign an agreement. Now, occupants should be contacted by the medical screening staff via phone for a wellness check every 12 hours from 8 to 8 p.m. with their answers recorded in the corresponding form. If the occupant does not answer their phone, the medical screening staff must call back in 15 minutes. If there is still no answer, the on-site coordinator and the on-site medical personnel will, contact an in, will conduct an in-person wellness check at the occupant's room. The staff must not first, but if there's no answer, they can go in without permission. Now, food is delivered three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The occupant can request snacks between meals through the on-site coordinator. If this is requested, appropriate site staff will need to deliver the snack in the same way a meal is delivered. Food for the night shift staff should be delivered without with dinner and placed in a fridge. So you have to ask for food. You can't like go out and get it on your own. You're essentially under room arrest when you get uh, quarantined in this place. If an individual delivers a package for the occupant in isolation, they must open it up and show its content to the on-site coordinator. Any non-permitted items must be removed from the package and given back to the deliverer and a delivery to occupant slip signed by them. Once the site coordinator, coordinate confirms the contents of the package are permitted, they should call the occupant to inform them a package will be delivered to their room. 
the coordinator can then place the package outside of the occupant's room, not twice to alert the occupant and walk away. Sounds like prison, doesn't it? It may sometimes be necessary to involuntarily check out occupants from the site for repeated or serious violation of rules. And I'm not gonna read all this to you, but I'll just read this choice little tidbit here. If media might be present, reach out to public affairs and have them present. Communicate to the occupant that they have one hour to gather their belongings once they've been informed that they're being checked out. So there's a whole, this is, um, again, I'll just show you this. I printed out the first page and, and some selections from it. And this is being done in every state. I reported either last week or the week before. I'm not sleeping these days, so I can't remember when I did what. But I reported on, um, I think it's the state of Arkansas has camps that you can be sent to. And this is the manual from the state of Wisconsin. And I suspect all states have them. And this does not sound like freedom and democracy to me. This sounds like communism. It sounds like Nazism, locking people up in camps. Um, it sounds like something we need to get rid of. That's what I think. Okay, I don't know what you think about this. And uh, I'm going to say something, you know, uh, I get, as you might imagine, a lot of interesting emails um, from many, I, I get a lot of very interesting emails, let me say it differently. Uh, very thoughtful emails from people and some people disagree with me on something or other and we've had some very interesting dialogue back and forth Some people are just so openly hostile. There's nothing you can do What I'm amazed at is the people who disagree with me and when I say well show me that I'm wrong <laughs> But somebody emailed me back and said well, I don't have any time to do any research. Okay, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how we can have a discussion if you don't have time to look into it but um, but people will say that calling the, the, the government officials emperors and Nazis and that sort of thing is not appropriate. I don't know what you call people who think that this is okay. I don't think it's okay. I, I want somebody to tell me they think this is okay. That somebody has to have permission to get something from their home while they're quarantined. They have six hours to report. What is up with that? What is up with that? I mean, what what... Tell me what part of this is acceptable to you. I want to talk to the person who thinks that this is okay. Okay, so you, you actually give me a justification for this and tell me how this isn't like Nazi Germany. Because remember, they, sooner or later, they're going to come for you. And you gotta be, you're you going to need for people like me to be working on your behalf. All right. So anyway, makeamericansfreeagain.com. Hopefully I'm motivating you to... Uh, get signed up on that site because it, we're not going to overcome this with a handful of people. We're going to overcome this kind of tyranny and that's what it is with, with organized civil disobedience and protests and lawsuits and lawsuits and lawsuits and voting the people out who think this is okay. Thank you for watching. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I will be back to you tomorrow with more news.